your needle with a minus and plus and tap on that and scroll till you get to the tree. You do not have to do the tack down and all that if you've already quilted it. Okay? I got is, everybody, it. is everybody with me? Yes. Yes. Mary? Yes. You got you got it? Mm-hmm. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is just embroider the tree trunk. And I'm using the brown, a brown thread, and that's what y'all need to be using. And just embroider the um tree trunk. Broken. Girls, I've got, we're going to mute you, but if somebody needs to ask me a question, unmute yourselves and ask me the question. But with everybody on, you're going to be hearing everybody's machines run. So we're actually just going to mute you for the time being. And like I said, unmute yourself if you have a question. I just wanted to make sure.
Um, all right, ladies, did y'all get it all finished? Unmute. Not yet for me, mine's a little slow. That's okay. Is everybody getting it done? And you'll have to unmute Almost. yourself. I just okay, need to finish the bottom of the tree trunk. Okay. Now stitching around the tree trunk. Okay. When you finish the tree trunk, load a green thread. I'm loading a darker green thread because I want it to show up on my see this? I want it to show up on my light green. So I'm going to load a darker green thread. And it can really be any color of green thread. Now, I'm not trying to rush you, so don't worry. Just take your time. Angela, are you through? And Lisa, just let me know when you're through. It's working on the trunk now. Okay, just let me know when it's finished. Okay. Carrie, I'm slow too, so don't wait for me. Y'all, I'm going to keep up, but I'm going to probably be a little bit behind, but don't. Don't slow down for me. I'll catch up. Okay. She's doing, she's doing it on purpose to keep me slow. <laughs> that, that's right. I didn't want you to be by yourself. <laughs> I used to go so fast and I'm, I'm finished for anybody else is. So she's making me slow down. Well, that's My okay. This is, this is a fairly easy block. So, you know, it's not going to be a problem. Okay. But you will load the green thread now. My green thread is loaded. Okay. The next step is going to be the placement line. So if you want to, you can go ahead and run it with the green thread. It's a placement line for the leaves of the tree. It's actually kind of hard to see it on that blue background, but. Y'all will have plenty of time to catch up when we have to trim this tree. Because there's a lot of trimming on the tree. I'm not sure if you're following along, but we are on page 12 of the instructions. So if you would like to try to keep up with where I'm at, that's where I'm at. I'm on um, number four on page 12. Carrie. Uh-huh. I was looking at the instructions 
I'm, I'm still trying to figure out this background situation. Um, but it looks like maybe if I had a skipped ahead and done the um, the tick mark line, uh -huh. you know, after I, after I did the batting, if I'd have done the tick mark, then I could have, you know, lined it up exactly. Well, you know, I know what you're saying, but I tried that to just to see. And uh -huh. when I did it, when I did that to try it, my tick line was exactly on my batting line. Really? Yeah. So then I, I thought, well, I don't need to do that because that's exactly what I was going to do. I was going to, I went to that first and was going to uh -huh. do that and then go back and do the quilting part. And when I did do it, it was right on it. So then I thought, well, I really don't have to do that. And it so could be, it. you know, it could be, um, maybe it's a different, be in a different machine. I don't know. Yeah, it could be. I don't know. Try, try next time not putting your design on top of your quilting. Do your quilting first. Uh-huh. And then pull your design in after you quilt it. See if that makes a difference. So I would just quilt the design and then after it was quilted, go back and while the quilting design was up, just add the embroidery on top. Well, you can just delete the quilting design. Okay. And then just, I, I just deleted it. Like I did it and then I waited till the next day and brought in my design. So it's, as long as you don't take it out of the hoop, it's gonna line back up? Yeah, exactly. Okay. okay. All right, I'll try that next time and see. Yeah, that, try and see. Okay. Carrie, at what point do I get rid of the jump stitches? Um, do you not have something on your machine that cuts your jump stitches? I don't know. I, I have them though on here. Uh, okay. Well, you can cut them at any point. If you've got jump okay. stitches, you can clip them now if you want to. That will be fine. Okay. And then I'll, I'll check on whether and how to do that later yeah you should have a, um something in your machine that you can set the jump stitches to cut at a certain like length or something yeah so you wouldn't have all the jump stitches so you can do something to eliminate them all together yes or to make them okay. just um very small like it might say i don't know um do a jump stitch at 0 0.08 or something but okay. It should be something in your machine that will set the length you want your jump stitches or not to do it to a certain length or something. Okay. Like, for example, right now, I don't have any jump stitches. And I am using the Solaris 2 today to embroider on. Has everybody stitched the placement lines for the leaves? Yeah. I think I'm on my last one. Okay. Then all you're going to do is lay your piece of green felt over top of all those leaves. And if you need to take it off the uh, machine to make sure you got it placed right, you can do so. Because I can't even see where my green really sewed, but I know it did. So hopefully I'm laying it over them and covering them all up. And then you'll just put it back in and it's going to do 
to tack down. If you feel more comfortable taping it, you can. But y'all know me. I'm not going to take mine. I'm just going to go. John. This is looking really cute. Oh, damn it. Ah. Is something wrong? Sorry, Erin. Um, yeah, it, it moved way to the top and then it wanted to go under the felt. So I had to um, catch it before it started sewing in the wrong place. Thank 
Were you able to save it? Yes. Good. Because I had my hand, I was ready for it. <laughs> I should have put my felt up and down. I oh, really, I put mine across. I did too, and I think I would have been better off if I put it vertically. Carrie. Yes. Now do we trim all these leaves? Yes, you do. But I'll tell you a little trick to this. If you'll take your scissors and cut up right through the middle of the felt, it yeah. will be easier to trim them out after you do that. Okay. It shows you that on page 12 at the bottom, how they just cut up between the leaves on the felt. And these will be like raw edge leaves. They don't go back and go over them. This is probably the hardest part of this block. Kind of hard getting around these leaves. Yes. <laughs> can we go back later and trim them up better? <laughs> yes. Yes, you can. I would just get mainly the bulk of it off. Yeah. Because it is hard to get around them.
Actually, if you cut a lot of the bulk off of them first, then it's a little bit easier, I think, to go back and go around them. Okay, is everybody about got it? Good, Fran. This is kind of what it should look like, girls. The next color you're going to need is black. So if we're not, are we not going to do anything in close to the tree area where we could just go ahead now? Um, let me, I don't think you'll have any trouble. No, because you're going to do a bicycle and then there'll be some things in the sky. So I don't think you'll have any trouble. I wouldn't leave a big chunk, but if you can kind of get the bulk of it off, I think you'd be fine. Okay. John, I'm making a mess. I can tell you that. I got green felt everywhere. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> we can vacuum it up later it'll be okay yeah <laughs> i like how it looks fuzzy i know i think it looks nice too okay the next thread is black we're going to be doing the tires on the bicycle so we can just finish finish it Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma you can just finish it. Just take the bulk away and you can trim it up. Yeah, you can trim it up later. And once you get the black loaded, you can go ahead and do your bicycle tires.
Everybody with me? Yes. After the tires, you're going to need the spokes. And I'm actually using uh, like a light gray for my spokes. You can use whatever you have or whatever you'd like. Spokes look so good. That's cute. They look like real bicycle spokes. Don't they look real? Like a shiny new car. Yep. <laughs> um, the next is going to be the bike frame. You can do that whatever color. It, I'm doing it gold, but you can do it whatever color you want to do it. Would it look good in red? I think it would. Yes. Okay. You could do the, like the next one after the bike frame is the seat in the handle fill, which is calling for red. You could do yours opposite. You could do yours if you wanted to gold with a red bike. So I'll do mine gold with the red handlebar. And after you do the bike, whatever color you want your seats and handlebars to be. And I'm using red. Uh -huh. 
If anybody has any questions, just stop me. I haven't gotten to the seat. Okay, that's okay. That will be after you do the bicycle, the frame, then it'll be the seat in the handle field. I'm doing the frame now. Okay. Did you do the pedal and the basket the same gray? I am. When I get to it, I am. Okay. Barbara, have you gotten the seat done, Barbara? No, is that where you put your glitter down? No, no, no. Um, have you, you've done the bike frame? I've done the frame. Okay, now you're going to do the seat in the handle, and you can do that. Uh, what color did you do your bike? Yeah, gold. Okay, do the uh, seat and handle fill with red. In red? Yes. And then after that, I'm going to do the bike pedal in the basket in the light gray that I used for the spokes. Okay, and your bicycle should be done after you put the basket on it. I'm getting ready to put the gray in for the paddles. Okay. After you finish the basket, you'll put red in. And you're going to stitch the rocket fuse detail in the red. All right, I got. I got the red. 
I mean, I got the pedals. What now? Okay, put red in. You got the pedal in the basket? You should be, are you, what step are you I on on get your the basket? I'm sorry, what? Did you do the basket, Barbara? Doing it now. Okay. After you do the basket, put red in and do the next in red. And then after you do the red, you do, we're on step 13, you put white in. All right, wait a minute. All right, Carrie, now I have to go somewhere else to find the pattern for the top. Do what now? The top part is not loaded on the same part as the tree and the bike. It should be. You need to have your six by 10 loaded. I have my eight by 12 loaded. You don't, you probably don't have your six by 10 pattern loaded. You have your um, hoop loaded, but you've, you've loaded your five by seven pattern because your six by 10 pattern is all one pattern. How do I do that? Well, it has to be, well, I, okay. Do you think the other part of the pattern is on your USB stick? Because more than likely, she might not have loaded the six by 10. She might have loaded all the five by seven. Look on your, you look on your USB stick and see what is loaded. See if there's one for a six by 10. The six by 10 would have the whole pattern. Okay, this is the one that has the fireworks? Yes. Okay. What do you have, the other half of it? Yes. Okay, well, I, I would assume it's gonna work the same, but next time you need to have the six by 10 pattern loaded and that way you would have the whole thing on one screen. Okay. Okay. So now it should show you needing, does it show you needing a red? No, it shows me needing two half squares on each side. When you, um, Barbara, when you look at your USB stick, by any chance, did she load the six by 10 file also? All right, now I've got a little curved part that looks like it might be in red. Okay, that would probably be it. Okay. I'm hoping. I am too. <laughs> All right, the rest of the ladies, have you done the red and then the white? 
And now we're ready to do the, um, you need to switch back to red and do the placement line. We're on um, step 14, doing the placement line for the little rocket. All right, this is not doing it right. It's putting that little red thing down beside of the tree. Okay. Um, did you look back and see if you've got the six by ten loaded on your USB stick? Okay, ladies, you can go ahead and do the uh, red placement line for the little rocket. This is where you're going to take your little piece of red glitter. And remember, you have to take the plastic off the red glitter piece. Okay? So it looks almost just like a piece of paper. But make sure you take the plastic off the red glitter. Okay? And then you're just going to, and if you want to tape it, you can. But you know me, I just hold it. And all you're going to do is tack this down. And watch How do I change the five by seven to the six by ten? Okay, you, did you find the six by ten? No. You would have to get that off the CD. You would have to load it from the CD to the USB stick because on your CD you had five by seven um, patterns and six by ten, and you really needed to load the six by ten patterns. Carrie, yes. This rocket that you're stitching the red with, you uh -huh. don't actually use the red glitter. You use the white glitter because I I looked at it on the instructions yeah. wrong, but it is it's a white glitter, not the red. So I'm pulling mine out because the it red is, is a triangle. Oh, I think you're right. But right. I wonder, but you know what? It's confusing the way they have it written. Well, but I think it's a mistake because it shows red on the left. On s stitch 14. Yeah, it does. But when you look at the picture of it, uh -huh. the, pic the picture is the body is white right. and the, the, the little triangle is red. So we got to put I the white that. down first. Yeah, I, you're exactly right. But that is weird, isn't it? Yeah. Because I'm picking mine out now because I followed their direction. <laughs> yeah, ladies, if you haven't done it, it's actually the white um, glitter. I'm picking mine out too. It's easier, <laughs> it's easier if you pick it off on the back side. Yeah. Okay. At least it won't that much to stitch. Yeah. Okay, so, so when direction number 14 it should be white, white yes glitter. yes yes that's weird because it has it shows red on the left yeah and then they have you do the placement line in red i know that's why i thought it was the red me too and you know i haven't done this i'm doing it with y'all <laughs> It looks like when it's finished, it, the body is going to be white, but it's going to have the red stitch in it, around it. Yeah. I guess that's why they told you to use red. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we mine, end with a red mine's, tip. Mine's going to stay. <laughs> and you can do, hey, and listen, you can do it opposite. I, I considered it. Okay. I pulled mine off. And you will, if you did that, you're going to have to back up. To stitch it again. Lord. And everybody knows how to back quick. up. Yep. Okay. And then all you'll do, you put the white glitter down instead of the red glitter. Like I said, it'll be outlined in red.
<laughs> you think it's going to be a problem to reuse the red glitter with the holes in it? No. Probably as long as you get the thread out of it. And really, um, it's only for the tip of that little thing. Yeah, that's mine, true. I've, I've got plenty of room to use mine. Yeah, I do too. So then after you put the white glitter down, you're going to trim around it. Okay. And Barbara, if um, if you can get somebody to load your six by 10, I will help you get through it. Okay. And then what they do is change it and do the opposite. They put the white in with the red glitter. So you're going to put white thread on and do the placement line for the tip of the rocket. Is everybody okay? Uh-huh. No, oh, but just go on. What'd you say? I said, no, it's not all right, but just go on. <laughs> I will help you get through it. And after you do the placement line, just put your piece of red glitter and so the tip. They're not having us press the red glitter? After, I would do it after this step. Okay. Um, after this step, take a piece of fabric and lay over your glitter and you can press it so it'll iron and adhere to the background. I would just go ahead and do them both at the same time. And actually, I don't think it's gonna do any more stitching on this, so you could do it at another time. You don't have to do it right this minute. And after you get the tip on it, you're gonna stitch the white star and firework explosion so you can leave the white on. Hallelujah. And we're almost finished. You see right below number 17, it tells you to press the glitter with a warm iron using a pressing cloth. Hey. 
Okay, can you can you do that pressing of the glitter later? You can on this particular one, you sure can because um, you're not gonna sew over it anymore or anything. So you can just okay. press it later. All right, thanks. And then now you'll just continue on with the white for the uh, kind of like for the fireworks. Barbara, when your daughter comes back over, get her to load the six by 10 patterns off your CD, okay? Okay. And then I will help you get through the rest of this. Because you should be able to pick up right after the bicycle and the tree and everything. The rest, you, you just would move through it till you get to the point you need to go. Okay. Um, now we're going to add the red thread, put the red thread on to continue to do the fireworks. Carrie, are we making these balloons that we'll put on later? Or are they in the embellishment kit? You will make them later using the wash away. Okay. But yeah, we'll make those later.
All right, after the red, you will use the gold. Are you using metallic gold or just regular cotton gold color? It's the um, poly, just a gold isocord. It's not actually a metallic. If you have a metallic to use, that would be nice. I do, but I didn't know if it would work okay. I know. You don't ever know when it comes to metallic. No, you don't. <laughs> That's why I was scared to do it on film. Yeah. Now, do you redo this for YouTube or is this it? This is it. <laughs> Why? Just wondering if we get edited out. No, you, you don't. Okay, then the last color you're going to use is the color that you quilted it with because now you're going to do the little eyelets where your lights will go. Okay, ladies, it's just you all to get the YouTube video. Nobody else can see it or get it. Great. Okay. <laughs> Whoops. Help if I thread my needle. Can we use these Swarzynski glue on J uh, jewels to put in these little spots instead of lights? Can you? Yeah, sure. You can do whatever you would like. That's a good idea. That's actually a good idea. I like the lights, but it, sometimes it's hard to get the pillar in and out and keep your lights in place. Yeah. That's yeah. the only yeah. thing. Because my other one was, it's hard to, my boulevard or whatever, it's hard to get the pillar in and out and keep the lights in the holes. And I even have everything taped, but it's still, it's a struggle. This is the last thing we have to stitch. While this is stitching, I wanna tell you next month, we're going to be doing the fire station. This probably is gonna be a, a longer video. 
Um, you will be using your eight and a half by 10 and a half background piece. There are a lot of embellishments. And the one I really wanted to show you was there is a colored vinyl. And I know you can't see the difference probably on film. You might can, I don't know. There's a colored vinyl and a clear vinyl and they're both in the same pack on top of each other. So when you go to look for them, they're in the same pack and they're laying on top of each other. And so it is a colored and a clear. You're going to need your white leather, your silver leather, your blue leather, and your black leather. And then I've already cut my little pieces. You'll need the pieces pre-cut. And then you'll just need the threads to match basically your fabric. It's probably red, white, gray. It's gonna be the same basically colors that we've been using. Would you tell, the, tell us those colors again of the leather? Oh, the leather? Um, do you want us to put it in an email to you? No, I can write it down or I can go back and listen to it like two or three more times like I did last week. <laughs> okay, it's the white leather, the silver leather, the navy blue, and the black. And it actually is all on page 15 of your directions. It lists everything, the fabrics that you're going to need, which I know you can't see this, but the fabrics that you're going to need and the size of the fabrics and your different leathers and the little pieces you'll need. You'll have to cut these off a bigger piece of leather and stuff. Okay, now, we have finished. Does everybody have a cute block? I'm still working Hello. on it. Okay, take your time. My, my thread broke, so I had to redo it. That's okay. Carrie, did you say this would be next month? Next week. Next week, okay. Next Friday. Uh, were you saying that you could put the glitter stones in instead of the lights, the fairy yeah. lights? You How could. do you do that? Yeah, that's a good idea, actually. How do you do it, though? You, I guess you would just glue them on. Oh, glue them? Uh-huh. That's what I would do. Um, I found that if you've got the little uh, wand that heats up, you could put them on like that, too. If you got these heated ones, okay. the package would tell you whether they are iron on or glue on. OK, um, would, would we easy. still have would we still have to do the little circles where the lights are? I guess you could glitter. Yeah, them because you could put the jewel right in the middle of that. OK, all right. And you you kind of know where to place them, I guess, to make it look right. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, now, I was just going to show you, if you've got the Kimberbell rulers, and to me, I love these Kimberbell rulers. I use them all the time to square up my blocks, and it just, to me, makes everything so much easier. But you need the four and a half by eight and a half and the four and a half by six and a half, and you nest them inside of each other. And you actually just I'm going to try to do this without laying it down. OK. What you basically do is center it. In the, let me get my thing straight. You want the bicycle tire to be like the big ruler to be a quarter inch past the bicycle tire, okay? And then you're gonna center this. You're gonna center it, okay? But you're going to have the bicycle tire a quarter inch from the bottom of the biggest ruler, okay? If you're using these rulers. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut up 
on the inside of this small ruler. You're only going to go up the right and left side, okay? You're not going to cut the top and bottom. You're only going to cut the right and the left. Then you're going to remove this one and cut the top and the bottom. Are y'all following me on that? No. Nobody's saying anything. <laughs> My correction. <laughs> but I'm, I'm listening. But it's I, I, mean, I, don't, I don't have those rules. Okay, well then you would just square it up to six and a half by eight and a half. But I would make sure it tells you that the bike tires need to be a fourth of an inch from the bottom edge of the largest ruler. So, where the tree is, correct? Or just below the tree? Right. It's probably, probably right at the tree. It okay. looks to me like it's about right at the tree. Okay? Okay. And just square it to four and a half by eight and a half. And just make sure you center your block. Does anybody have any questions? No. Did everybody?